Today's episode of the Occupy Wall Street Show is brought to you by Mount Gox and ThankYouEconomyBook.com and MemoryDealers.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Occupy Wall Street Show. Today we have a special treat for you. Uh, the one and only uh, num numero uno journalist uh, discovery of the Occupy Wall Street movement, Tim Poole is with me today. Welcome, Tim. How's it going? Good, good, good. So um, you are uh, with the media group called WeAreTheOther99.com. Yes. Right? Okay. So uh, I mean, I'm sure that you, uh, everybody knows who you are because your live stream has gone out to, what's, what's the total number of unique views now? It, it's over 2 million. Over 2 million. Yeah. So you're like more famous than Oprah really at this point <laughs> since she retired? Uh, no, but no. <laughs> I, I, one day. We'll but you had, how many live viewers did you have at the peak? Uh, simultaneous, the mm -hmm. most we've had was 31,000. That was mm -hmm. on Thursday. That's still and amazing. For, for the one broadcast, which was 12 hours, we had 750,000. So, you know, I don't know how, how you can break that down, divide it up, and figure out what the average time someone spent on the show was. Okay, so a, a Tim Poolism would be, um, for those of you, <laughs> he always says, for those of you who, whatever, so for those of you who may not have heard of Tim, Tim is, uh, has been an, an occupier from the very beginning, and he started, uh, you started live streaming, did you start live streaming right away? No. no How did that I, happen? I was originally just filming with my phone, mm -hmm. but I was working with Henry from the other 99, mm -hmm. and we were trying to figure out a way that we could do some of the political theater media events like uh, he had a, an event called A Conversation with the Top 1%, uh -huh. where he would sit in a chair and welcome members of the 1% to debate, kind of like how we're sitting right now. Right. And so I thought, what if we did uh, a live feed of the event? Because people were crowding around, and you know, uh, German news agency, French news agency, everyone really liked what he was doing. This was happening down at the park? Or yeah, what? yeah. Oh, okay. At the cool, west cool. end of the park, very early on. I missed that. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, he also did another bit called The Death of the American Dream, mm -hmm. where he set up a crime scene and did a chalk outline, <laughs> and then actually showed people information, uh, these cards, about the crimes that were committed by these major banks. Wow. Like mortgage fraud, etc. And so we set up the live, the, the Ustream mobile app because mm -hmm. of the versatility, just pointing the cell phone. Right. But then we had um, our first event, really, that we, we did was when Michael Moore came down, and mm -hmm. we, got, we, got, we got noticed because of it. <clears throat> because I think it was MSNBC, they couldn't do a live broadcast of uh, Michael Moore on Wall Street because their cables couldn't reach. And here I am walking next to him with my cell phone, and I said, Michael, we're live right now through my cell phone. <laughs> and, uh, and so we got, we got noticed a little bit because of that. Mm -hmm. And then just sort of where it went from there, I started slowly taking over narrating. Originally, Henry had been the correspondent. Mm -hmm. And then what our, our original intention was to cover these special events sort of to, to fade away as the police action in the, in the marches and the direct action from Occupy Wall Street picked up. Mm -hmm. So as time went on, it sort of evolved into me chasing the action with my, with my cell phone, narrating what was going on. Hmm. And then, you know, we had a big event with the Oakland Solidarity March, over 2,000 people simultaneous, over hmm. uh, 25,000 tuned in for that. And that was huge. You know, right. over 2,000 people were running through the streets for, mm -hmm. that, for that action. And then, mm -hmm. obviously, most people know about the eviction. That, we hit, that was a big day. Yeah, the Tuesday. Overnight, and then the whole next yeah. day, right? Yeah, I didn't sleep for almost three days. Yeah. I was up for 21 hours doing a simultaneous. I was up there with you. You know, by the way, <laughs> me and everyone else, by the way, I, this is a weird little story, but um, uh, something happened that night. Like, um, I went to bed, you know, I was at home, and I went to bed, but at four o'clock, and this doesn't happen to me, but like at four o'clock in the morning, it was around four o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden I just like, boom, I woke up, like sat up out of a sound sleep, and 
I, I was like wide awake. And I'm like, you know, whenever that, I mean, that never happens. But I reached for my phone. You know, whenever I wake up, I look at my phone. And there's an email, an emergency alert from that, um, what, that organization. I forgot it was. The one with a great big LED counter. Um, oh, uh, Avaz. Uh, Avaz, that's right. It was an emergency email alert from Avaz. And I read it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I went and turned on the live stream, and that's when I saw everything happening. But it was like 4 o'clock in the morning by that time. But like they started at 1 a.m., and by then it was probably in midstream or almost over or something. But that's when yeah. I tuned into your stream, and then I didn't leave the house for the next you know, <laughs> 16 hours or something. I just I wanted to go down there, but I couldn't tear my way, you know, myself away from the stream. You're going to miss a half an hour if you leave. Yeah. And all my friends said the same thing. So anyway, go ahead. From from your perspective, like you weren't prepared for that. No, I I just felt compelled. I said, "This is history, and mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure I have the uh, right? the live feed going." Yeah. But I guess what happened was, with everyone being caught off guard, mm -hmm. the you know the main media teams from Occupy Wall Street, they didn't have their batteries charged. Right. And so I was the only one going, and I was actually running on par a partial charge. Right. But the volunteers showed up and things. People donated. Uh, you were, you were hungry, you wanted fruit. You know, I swear to God, by the end of the day, I had a bag of fruit and a water and a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I had a little care package to go down there and give to you. But then by then, you already had plenty of it. I was like, oh, I just, I wanted to be there and volunteer to run and get you water and fruit and carry your, ba whatever, you know, that backpack that you could barely let go around. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. So now you probably have more help than you need. But. It, it was, it was that, that day was really crazy because of how everything fell into place. Mm -hmm. My battery was dying. Yeah. And then Justin Wiedis runs past me. And he's like, come on, come on, I got a shot for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, I need a battery. And he's like, plug it into my computer. Yeah. And, so, uh, and then you were lugging around the computer for so the rest of the day. I'm lugging the computer <laughs> using it to keep the, the stream going. Yeah. And then right as the phone's dying, uh, a gentleman comes up to me and says, how can I help? And I said, I need a battery. And he went and bought me a battery. He went to JNR and bought you a battery. Yep. I saw and that. And then sure enough. Um, and it came half charged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> become partially charged. But hey, yeah. it was better than nothing. Yeah. Some, some other people from Occupy Unity went on the chat and said, we've ordered you another battery at JNR, go pick it up. Wow. So my friend ran and grabbed it, and uh, it was just really crazy how everything fell into place the way it did. How many batteries does your team have now? Three. You keep them charged all the time? Yeah. So you, keep, you have two charging and one in use? or you're keep, Yeah, yeah. Or one you're using, They're all fully charged. one extra, and then one's always on the charger or something since, like that? Since Thursday, actually I would say since Tuesday, I haven't had to use more than one. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, I ran 12 and a half hours off of one external battery. And it, yeah. by the time the night was over, it still had, you know, out of four bars, it still had one bar. Do you have a system now that when you need an extra battery that you can, you can get somebody to go bring it to you or whatever? Well, I just carry more than one battery with me. So more than one they're, is enough? They're only, you know, okay. they're pretty small. And do you have a second phone yet? Because I kept yes. saying, Tim, get a second. We need to give him a second phone so you can make a phone call <laughs> without giving out your number in the air. <laughs> I do have two phones now. <laughs> Yeah, that was. Funny. We, I mean, it wasn't funny, but it was kind of funny. I thought I thought it was funny. I, as soon as as soon as the stream went down, I was just I was the second kind of, time you gave out laughing. your number, it was a little funny. <laughs> but then yeah, but then yeah, the troll, the the haters who were like, call again, call again, cut him off. Yeah, you know? let's, yeah, like, yeah, oh, brother. But then I thought then I thought it was really kind of fun to see you coming out of the sprint store. Yay! They changed my number. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. It took five minutes. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping you'd figure that out. So <laughs> that's cool. So. Um, Let's see. And then since then, all right, then we had the uh, uh, N17, yeah, which was a huge deal. But you thought that you lost the signal because there was just an oversaturation of um, cell service. But that wasn't really what the cause was, was it? Or was it both? No. Um, there were other people complaining about their cells giving out. Mm -hmm. And someone was trying. I, I, I found someone else who had a smartphone, and they said they would download the app that, mm -hmm. and let me use their phone. They mm -hmm. couldn't do it either. All right. So okay. we were thinking, okay, maybe it's this network for this particular company. Mm -hmm. So we had someone on different network try and didn't work either. Mm. But later found out it was a session issue, server side, had nothing to do with, I'm sure there was mm -hmm. some congestion, but yeah. it was really just. So they were trying to log into your account or connect to your account? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, so it, so was, a, it was an issue with that. Okay. But it was an issue with our account. Once you figured out someone else was on Ustream and it was working fine, then you were like, oh, wait a minute. It's, yeah. not, the, it's not the carrier. It's, not the, it's your account with Ustream. So you troubleshot that with Ustream probably and figured it out. Yeah, it took yeah. It, it took us kind of a while because yeah. I had tried using someone else's using you know mm -hmm. other other networks and it didn't work and mm -hmm. I was kind of like you know what's going on here yeah and then like once you got a hold of Ustream how long did it take for them to sort it out ten minutes yeah <laughs> well <laughs> now the you first know first thing I should have done <laughs> now you know live and learn yeah that's cool so this is let's uh, show the your website this is. Uh, 
wearetheother99.com, and this is your main website. Mm -hmm. Okay. For well, for for we are the other ninety nine, and this yes. is Henry, <clears throat> Henry, and you. And how many people are in this team? Um, well, there's there's Henry, there's me, there's Jesse Lagreca, known as mm -hmm. the smartest man on Wall Street, uh, Will McLeod, and Alec. Okay, I don't know any of them no. except Henry. Yeah, we only know the people on camera, you know, of course. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the guys behind the scenes are are very very important, mm -hmm. you know. And, well, course, I mean, yeah. everyone knows Jesse. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, Jesse, of course. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He's amazing. When I saw him, you know, going on about <laughs> that Fox News, that was my second favorite. My bef prior to Tim Pool and all that, my first favorite uh, scene. I have to like kind of guilty confession was seeing uh, Geraldo be, you know, Fox News lies, Fox News lies, chanted out of yeah. the park. Just kind of like, eh. I mean, I know, I know, I, know, I don't want to see anybody, you know, scorned or whatever. But it was a. I'd never seen that happen before. Here's, you know, here's, Fox it, News has to, you know, be accountable for it's true. the reputation. They, they say horrible things. They exaggerate. They, you know, as if it's true. But yeah. that's that's mainstream media. Yeah. That's why it's so important we have mm -hmm. uh, the the OWS NYC on live stream or you know Dwayne's channel right. and Global Revolution right. doing everything they're doing because it's really funny to me that telling the truth and making attempts at objectivity are mm -hmm. considered these amazing... Revolutionary. Yeah, exactly, revolutionary. Oh my gosh. That people are telling me like, wow, you're doing a good thing. And I said, this is just normal journalism. Mm-hmm, exactly. It's, it's what journalism is, supposed to, journalism yeah. is supposed to be. It's like somebody in the, in the elevator the other day saw I had a 99% shirt on or something and, and somebody said something about Occupy. And they're like, well, but what I don't understand is what exactly do they want? And I... We're in an elevator, you know, we're about to my floor. So I said, well, in a couple words, they went um, freedom, liberty, and democracy. And they're like, this is supposed to be a free country. All the things that we thought we had and we brainwashed to believe that this country was about, that's what they want for real. So, and it's the same with journalism. What we want is journalism, like real journalism, for real. <laughs> I, I would sum it up with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and th democracy. <laughs> You're like, yeah. you know, politicians that are not bought and paid for years before they run. So, all right, let's switch back over here. Okay, so this is, uh, we are the other 99, and we have, obviously, your Twitter feed. Uh, so this is the one you tweet on most, TimCast? Yeah. yeah. Okay, at TimCast. So you can follow him there. You can see he's going to be on Only One TV there. <laughs> and uh, now this is TimCast.tv. Yeah. This is a new site? Yeah, I, well, th this is... It was redirecting to Occumentary.org. Oh, okay. But it's currently being built by someone who offered their services. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. To do the but design? Okay, Essentially, cool. it's a small explanation of the project I'm working on right now. And Which is the documentary? Yeah. Okay. We're just going to mm -hmm. travel around, cover the other occupations, and uh, make a live feed of everything that happens. Mm -hmm. And it says you've collected $11,785 uh, towards of donations. 47% yeah. of your goal... Three days remaining. Can you extend that? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, otherwise, we need another twelve thousand dollars in three days. So, <laughs> click this. Go Somebody to, with go a timcast.com. No. Yeah. Bitcoin. Oh. You take Bitcoin too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Is that if on you, here? It's on the. If you click donate now, oh, it'll donate. show the. Over here. Yeah. Can we pay? So I don't know if people aren't going to be able to. Uh, Let's see. The, the best. The best thing people can do is go to timcast.tv, click the donation link, and then copy the. Oh, right. It's right okay. there at the bottom. But. Okay, so if you follow that, see so you're on timcast.tv, right? And then click that great, big, huge blue button, Donate, We Pay. And then that's the donation page. And then at the bottom, down here underneath his signature, it says Bitcoins go here, and that's his Bitcoin address. So send him Bitcoins. Everybody loves Bitcoins. Yeah. I'd, you know, we do yeah. the, the Bitcoin show is one of the other, you know, shows that we do yeah, here. Yeah, right on. So, um... All right, so that's cool. Are the bitcoins? Are they? Are, have you received any bitcoin donations? I have. I have thirty three point seven eight, uh, thirty three point seven three eight five. I think. There you go. That's better than nothing. That's good. <laughs> it's a start. Maybe we'll get more now because we have a lot of bitcoin audience here. Yeah, too. that'd be great. Okay, and then Evil Twin Bookings Agency. So this is um, they're booking you now for speaking engagements. Yeah, this just happened yesterday. Wow. So I was contacted by Scott Bybin. And he was asking me if I was interested in talking about just, you know, journalism, technology, social media and stuff, going mm -hmm. to colleges. Mm -hmm. And I said, absolutely. They also represent the Yes Men. So that's really <laughs> awesome for me because I'm a big fan of what they do. Amazing. And uh, 
so yeah, this is for us, the spring semester, I guess. Wow. And uh, yeah, if anyone's interested, it's eviltwinbooking.com, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Eviltwinbooking.com, and then you're on the right-hand side. I love this picture of you. That's great. This yeah, is yeah. a classic with the, the umbrella. umbrella. <laughs> the big black and white umbrella. That's why I was going to go down there. Like I told you, I had my care package with bananas and oranges and water. I had all the things that you were saying you needed. Of course, I was way too late. Well, well but I was like, I'm going to look for that black and white umbrella. That's how I'm going to find you. It's, what's funny about the banana thing <laughs> is that I didn't really mean I needed specifically a banana. <laughs> I was just kind of making Something a, like a reference to the, the, the lack of potassium and my hands were cramping. Right. So right. I actually bought a smoothie, but it was funny how many bananas showed up. Yeah. It's really <laughs> awesome. What are you going to do? You probably had so many bananas. Well, well, it was great. I mean, the bananas were awesome. Yeah. So. You can always, everybody can always eat bananas. And then, okay, so this is our, oh, this is something that I wanted to show, talk about. Um, this is on OnlyOneTV.com, of course, on our site. Um, I, I, I don't think I told you this even. I created I, this. On that day, did I tell you this or you found no, it? No, but I found it. You found it. That's yeah. so funny. Uh, <laughs> because on the day that I was stuck at home watching you because I couldn't leave the house, okay, I, w- I was, found myself flipping between all the live streams. And I was like, screw this. I need this on one page. I'm like, wait, why don't I just make it on my own page? So I created this thing, <laughs> Occupy Wall Street Live Coverage, right here on the top of uh, Only One TV. So you go to OnlyOneTV.com and click Occupy Wall Street Live Coverage. And it's got all the... I had like five or six streams on here at one time, but I'm Tim Pool is right there on top. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> there it is. And that's, the video right there is actually from the solidarity, the Egypt Solidarity Action that was last night. Last night. Cool. And it automatically... Yeah plays the most recent first and just scrolls yeah. through them? Is well, I can, I can set it. Mm-hmm. So for a while, we had the Raymond Lewis interview. Mm. So for those who are not familiar, he's the retired Philadelphia police captain. Right. Yes, yes, and yes. And he is a huge celebrity now. He's amazing. I, we saw him on, um, uh, what was he on? Keith Olbermann? Keith Olbermann, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, all that. and then, yeah, and I also put on here Global Revolution. They're all playing. Uh, Occupy NYC. Yeah. Some live, That's some Dwayne's not. channel. OWSNYC, and I had, I had Looks another like one. Council. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? So, um, so anyway, the, you know, you can just check here in one page and mute all the ones you're not listening to. But it's Occupy Wall Street live coverage, and then um, this is another thing. Well, let's see. Um, I okay. This is something that people have uh, been talking about a lot, and that is uh, Occupy Wall Street having a list of demands. Okay, and what are their demands? Okay, so um, I'm like, I had this idea the other day when I was talking to somebody, and I said, Google Moderator has a tool that they used inside Google where you could put a list of items and people could vote them up and down. So um, I decided to create this, and also on OccupyWallST.org, there was a forum where people, somebody had a proposed list of demands. So I just copied and pasted the first eight, and I created this. So uh, if you go to um, only one TV, wait, <laughs> where is it? OnlyOneTV.com, and then click here, OWS Demands. I made this link to this Google Moderator thing. So you can see I created it. Anyone can vote. Absolutely anybody can enter whatever demands that they would suggest. And then um, you can click the first button here to submit an idea, and then View Ideas will actually give you the list of ideas. So it puts a random one up at the top, and then you vote yes or no, whatever you believe. Or you can flag it as inappropriate if you think it's an inappropriate one, right? <laughs> and then it automatically, uh, by default, it puts them in order of uh, the ones that people have voted on most, cool. and so on. So like again, back here, um, it hasn't been promoted very much, but I, that's why I want to mention it today. Um, 258 votes so far. So you know, if it gets some traction, it could be interesting because um, it's not my demands or anybody else's. It's just everybody's demands. Anybody yeah. and everybody. You know, I guess the 99 percent. You know, if the one percent vote, they can vote too. But you know, hey, we got 99 percent of the people. Does it show the? <laughs> uh, does it show a percentage breakdown for yes and no? Yeah. See right here. If you hover over the blue thing, it shows 24 like this idea, zero didn't like it. So that's the first idea. You know, and Looks then like everyone they're in order. Yeah. I mean, if you get if you go further down the list. Like, you can put them in a different order, like, uh, by, just by date, for example. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And oh, wow. there's one. There, this, there's one said no and seven said yes. So you can put them in different orders, popularity, hot, and so on. So the first one, the most popular one, is basically um, to investigate and prosecute the Wall Street criminals, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kind of like a, a recurring theme, and then, uh, and so on and so on. But it's interesting because 
like I say, you in the audience, you can go here, go to onlyonetv.com, click on OWS demands, and put in your own demands. Put in whatever you think, whatever you think the demands should be. Well, you know, oh, go ahead. What I was going to say, say, what's interesting about that is this is sort of, they, they did have a vote on what the demands should be mm -hmm. before Occupy Wall Street started. Mm. But everyone sort of views, you know, there's an, just almost an equal amount of people who see other problems as being more pertinent. Yeah. So eventually, I, I'm not, I don't know, I don't want to say this is absolutely true, but from what I understand is that you can't reach consensus when someone says the, most, the biggest problem is, you know, Glass-Steagall, and someone else says, no, the biggest problem is, the, you know, fracking or something like that, right. you know, along the lines. Yeah. Or we need to increase the minimum wage, and then they, <clears throat> you're not going to have a consensus on these political issues. Right. So what I think started happening was people said, okay, and they started working together and building a community. Mm -hmm. That way, what, what I sort of noticed is that people came in to Occupy Wall Street with, bit, with these huge problems. Right. Tax the rich, Glass-Steagall, um, fracking was, was big, or uh, Troy Davis Same. was big in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And not really for Occupy Wall Street, but that was, a lot of people were talking about it. Right. And those big problems, uh, or I should also include, I'm sorry if I left out the, uh, the libertarians who were saying less taxes, mm -hmm. less government intrusion. There, there. <clears throat> right. Those big problems turned into, how do I stay dry? Yeah, So exactly. instead of two people arguing over who to tax, they argued over where they're going to get umbrellas and how they're going to do it for each other. Right. So it right. sort of it came together. Managing the little village that was the park. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. I saw that. And, um, and also, the direct democracy um, system of consensus and the GA and all that, which is fantastic for, should we do this or should we not do this? Yes or no questions, it works great. But taking a list of 600 items and sorting them in order of priority, that's not quite as easy yeah. to do with a, you know, with a consensus. You know, mm -hmm. that's really... <laughs> the happy hand. That's why, you know, and it's like the human mic. It's like, that's really cool. It's really cool. And it's so cool that you can do it without technology. But sometimes we have to use technology too. That's why I thought this is really cool because absolutely anybody can put in their ideas and it sorts them up and down. And by the way, I'll make it very clear, this is not Tim's project, is I created this as an experiment. It's an unofficial experiment just for the heck of it, to see what comes out of this. And if enough people, if we get thousands of people putting in ideas and voting on it, um, maybe it'll come out with something useful. Maybe we'll come out with a top 20 and um, you know that those top 20 ideas could be then used somewhere else to say, hey, let's vote on this or something. And I mean, who knows? I but think you, you might need around 7 billion yeah. votes before people... That's, that's another, another issue is how do we... You know, there, there are people around the world who don't have access to, th to this technology who deserve to be heard. Right. So it's sort of... It's, a, it's really hard to, come, to talk about demands. And yeah. that's pretty much why OWS has been... You know, I don't want to speak for, on behalf of Occupy Wall Street, but from right. what I understood, mm -hmm. demands have generally been shot down. Right. And also, there's um, the question of, I mean, two different scopes of it, too, because there's Occupy Wall Street within the United States, which obviously involves the U.S. political system, and then there's the greater yeah. picture of the global solidarity, and um, there are global issues. So there are global issues, there are issues specifically inside of Egypt, specifically in the U.S., wherever, whatever. So, yeah, it even gets more complex. Yeah. But anyway, it's a good thing to start with, I thought. You know, and when people... So I, I get viewers who send email, and they say, yeah, but what are the, You know, I'm... You know, they, like, maybe they're conservative, Tea Party, whatever, and they're like, yeah, but uh, I'm a, I'm, I want smaller government, less government, this and that. And I'm like, well, then you're part of the 99%. Put in your, put in your demand and right, vote it up, you know? It's, it's not mutually exclusive. It's really... The 99% really does... is inclusive mm -hmm. of pretty much everybody except the 1% that, you know, kind of... And it's, it's really, it's not anti-capitalism. Everybody's talking about anti-capitalism. Yeah, yeah. It's really not anti-capitalism. It's anti-thievery. Corruption. Really. Corruption, In both thievery. government and corporations. That's just, right. But just corruption in general. That's right. Crime. Government, corporations, and of course, uh, banks are corporations. <laughs> and yep. so are pharmaceuticals and, you know, corporate agriculture and all those things are, are global corporations. Um, I have a funny mm -hmm. story about what you just said. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a few weeks in and I saw a young man who was just looking real pissed off and he said, this is dumb, it's a waste of time. And I asked him, why does he think so? And he gave me some reasons and said, if you want to change things, you got to do this, this and this. Mm -hmm. And so I said to him, you're right. You know what you should do? You should come down to the General Assembly tonight and tell them. And yeah. he was like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's <laughs> I was, right. That's I do the, the same point. thing. <laughs> 
I do the exact same thing. They're like, you know, what they really should be protesting about is this and this and this. And I'm like, yeah, you should go down there and say that. And yeah. then, yeah, it, it works not, sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, right. But it, they have to get off their, their butt and go down there and, and join in. And, and a lot, like I was saying, a lot of the things, uh, even, even during the actual encampment, right, um, I would tell people, really, um, it's a lot bigger than just you know, people coming because there's free food or whatever and all the things that happen down there and the, the encampment itself, pr protecting yourself from the weather. It's really, like, I even said, most of what's really happening is not really happening in the park. Yeah. It's happening in the dozens and dozens and dozens of working groups that are happening, so many of them that they have conflicting meetings and times and people are running around going from meeting to meeting, uh, working groups and sub-working groups and so on, and that that's where the real magic is happening. It's, it's, it's interesting to note, too, that since the eviction... The Occupy movement, it's it's still going. Yeah. And essentially, what they ever, did right? was they, you know, they killed the body, but the spirit lives on. Right. And that's sort of, you know, the foundation for Occupy is so strong that there mm -hmm. there's no longer this occupation in Zuccotti. Yeah. But pe the working group still functions. The spokes sure. council still happens. More than ever, probably. Yeah, yeah, I've seen. People the, are probably more comfortable and dry and dress better, and you know. Yep. <laughs> and you know, and more efficient. They're not like you said. They're not quibbling about. The stupid news stories they're trying to make a big deal about the east side of the park and the west side and the whatever this and that and trying to make complaints. You know, this actually, I think it's a good thing. It's a blessing in disguise, sort of, mm -hmm. because, you know, everybody, try, the, the negative mainstream media trying to attack the occupation, they're always attacking it about, oh, it's not clean, it's not sanitary, it's lawbreakers and all this nonsense. Well, now the park is, you know, back to its original state, except it's much more popular. And, um, but the movement, that was kind of like a birthing. I look at it as a birth. Yeah. It was a birth of the movement was there. But now it's, it's been born and it's growing. For, for the eviction, destruction of the library, mm. horrible. And that makes me, oh my I can't even, I'm, I'm holding back anger. I'm yeah, trying know, to keep cool because in the- 4,000 yeah, books or something. Over 4,000 books yeah. and that's- I know, I saw your stream of all yeah. about that. They were all destroyed and you, they were, where was that? Where they had on that big table that you were streaming? Where that was at uh, 260 books. Madison. It was mm. a lawyer's office and they were mm. holding a press conference. Wow. And, uh, that's just sick. Let, let me just say I'm uh, publicly holding back what I would mm. really like to say. Yeah. Uh, that was horrible. The destruction of the bike generators was uh. ridiculous. Like there were, were so many good ideas that were being born in there that were taken away illegally, personal property that was destroyed. Uh, I don't want to, you know, this is just a rumor, but puppies were killed. I know, I was just going to say yeah, that that's, too. And that's sort of, I mean, you know. <laughs> but if the books don't get you and the bike generator doesn't get to your heart, the puppies... Oh my gosh, nursing puppies inside of a tent, just scooped up and away. crushed in a, in, a, in a garbage truck. It's just so criminal. And, and, and I mean, is anybody uh, trying to prosecute, you know, the city or at least sue them for this? It's just criminal. I have no idea. I theft. mean... It's just destruction. It's book burning. It's just like book burning throughout history. The idea of, of taking this massive library, and I was down there, I don't know if, any, if you've seen pictures of it, but that, who was it that donated... Um, the tent? I don't know. I don't remember her name, but it was some famous rocker yeah. or whatever. Donated this beautiful tent and they had all these shelves and they were all organized and indexed. Volunteer librarians came from all over the country and it was just this amazing library in a park. And just well, to see it destroyed for what? You, the, the reason they did the raid the way they did is that the last time they announced the raid, mm. several thousand people showed up and said no. Right. So this time they said, we're not going to tell them when we're going to do yeah. it. We're going to wait and then we're going to take them by Middle surprise. Middle of the night, yeah. Yep. So, so courageous of them. Oh. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. Well, like we said, you know, hopefully it's, it's I mean, not even hopefully, evidently, it's very, very, uh, it's just making it more popular because... A few days later, on November 17th, there were some you 30, know, tens thousand, of thousands. Yeah, right? 30, 32, 650 is what people are throwing around. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how the, how the police helicopter actually counted 32,650, not 52. But well, <laughs> that's why there's no two. They do it by square like feet. Precise. And, oh, really? That's the, they, like mathematically? They yeah, calculate yeah, it? yeah, yeah. 32,000 plus people. Unbelievable. I, I would have thought they'd have learned by now that whenever they take action, mm -hmm. the police, it makes things worse. Yeah. For them. I mean, yeah. actually... It makes it, the movement grow. Yeah. It's worse for everybody because the, the police are the... You know, we essentially have peaceful protesters mm -hmm. and we, then we have the government agencies who are choosing to be violent. Exactly. And it's really amazing that, um, that Occupy Wall Street's resisted 
I would, you know, extreme violence. We saw yeah. a black block in Oakland, but mm -hmm. the protesters actually linked arms and defended buildings against the black block. That was crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of, someone told me that we have given all of the rights to violence to our government. Yeah. So anyone outside of a government agency that becomes violent is automatically illegitimate. Right. So we have to stand together nonviolently and say, it's, it's time to, for a change. To protect ourselves from the violence of the police state mm -hmm. that it's become. And it, and it doesn't matter. You know, I want to address yeah. you, talking about police state. You know, this, that, that phrase gets thrown around a lot. And some, I hear people saying, oh, we don't. It's not a police state. You don't understand what that means. Mm -hmm. But I think it was for at least New York when Judge Lucy Billings issued the temporary restraining order on the yeah. NYPD. And they refused to adhere to it. It really blew my mind. That's and a police then, state. That's the police yeah. overriding the courts, the justice exactly. system, and then the, ignoring it. The arrest of Idonis Rodriguez, the city councilman. Yeah, more was, than once I heard. Yeah, well, the second time, I think it was on purpose. Oh. Because the first time, he was marching legally, mm -hmm. and they grabbed him, they threw him on the ground, they scuffed him up a little bit. I think he was, uh, he was you know, bleeding on his head. And he said, I am city councilman Idonis Rodriguez, let me speak to your supervisor. And they said, later. <laughs> and they arrested him, and, you yeah. know, that, it's just crazy. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Well, let's take a break really quick to, and to thank our sponsors because if it weren't for our sponsors, we wouldn't uh, be here <laughs> to bring you the Occupy Wall Street show. So uh, first, Mt. Gox, um, we, we brought up Bitcoin. If you don't know what Bitcoin is, check out the Bitcoin show, which is another show here on Only One TV. But Bitcoin is kind of, uh, people have called it the money of the future, the people's money, um, the most exciting technology since the invention of the internet, people, people have said. Even I've said that uh, because it's so cool. It's peer-to-peer, -peer, open source software project uh, called Bitcoin. It's uh, a currency that's independent of the, uh, of the dollar or the euro or the franc or whatever, you know. Um, and it, it has a floating value that's independent, but it's electronic and you can, it's not issued by any bank, government, corporation, entity, anybody, anything like that. So if you want to, you know, leave banking, <laughs> Bitcoin's a way to do that because you can literally buy Bitcoin, keep it in Bitcoin. You don't need anybody's permission and, you know, you don't have to be of a certain age or a certain, it's global. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the internet itself. So um, anyway, Mt. Gox happens to be the largest Bitcoin exchange. There are online Bitcoin exchanges where you can buy and sell Bitcoins and um, Mt. Gox has more than 90% market share right? last time I checked. And um, they, you can, with uh, more than 16 currencies, you can buy Bitcoin anywhere in the world on mtgox, mtgox.com, and uh, buy, sell, 24 hours, automated exchange. It's, it's brilliant. And they have uh, super security with this uh, two-factor authentication little device, that you, a little USB thingy dongle you put on your keychain called a YubiKey, so that even if you use a public terminal or, you know, public kiosk or your computer is infested with viruses, you don't even know it, it doesn't matter because you put this thing in, it gives a password that's only good for like two seconds. So uh, no password can, I mean, if a virus captures your password, it can't get in because um, of that YubiKey. So it's super, super secure and, uh, and brilliant. So we thank Mt. Gox for sponsoring our Occupy Wall Street show and thank you economybook.com. New York Times bestselling author Gary Vaynerchuk, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's He's a very famous uh, serial entrepreneur. He started out uh, doing a, a wine, well, he, inheriting his family's uh, wine business. And he grew it into this massive uh, online and brick and mortar business. And um, he's gotten into social media huge. And now this is his second book, I believe. And uh, it's called The Thank You Economy. And it, tell, it teaches anybody in business, whether you're a, a you know, first-time startup entrepreneur, uh, medium-sized business, or super large business, it doesn't matter, it's very scalable, how to use social media and, you know, all the technology of Web 2.0 and all that stuff to leverage that to bring to your customers a real old-fashioned customer service, like your grandparents used to experience at the general store down, down the street. So um, you're, they're not just selling stuff, you're actually creating relationships with your customers. Good old-fashioned customer service, basically. But it teaches you how to do it right. Because, I mean, everybody in business kind of understands intuitively that there's some value to using social media um, to promote your business and your product or your brand, whatever it is. But I say 99% do it wrong. They just don't know what to do. And then they're, they're end up, their customers and their audience feels spammed and yeah. they're just annoyed. So you can do it right and you can actually help people and that they appreciate it and you build a relationship. So that's what this book is about. It's like the Bible of that. So it's called Thank You Economy and uh, you can check it out at thankyoeconomybook.com and we thank uh, Gary Vaynerchuk for sponsoring the Occupy Wall Street show and 
MemoryDealers.com. MemoryDealers.com is uh, an online retailer, one of the largest online retailers that accepts Bitcoin and promotes Bitcoin. You can even buy physical Bitcoins. They have different implementations of actual physical wow. Bitcoins, yeah. And you can buy them on, online. Actually, at his, his store is a, a major dealer, MemoryDealers.com, uh, retailer, I mean. And they accept, uh, obviously, they also accept credit cards and PayPal and all that. But you can use those things, credit card, PayPal, and all that, to buy physical Bitcoins. So it's a way to buy Bitcoins with credit cards and PayPal. But not only that, Memory Dealers um, is one of the largest inventories of optical um, switches and uh, fiber optic networking gear, switches, routers, all that kind of stuff, and obviously memory and uh, Bitcoin mining gear and many, many other types of uh, hardware products. But check them out, memorydealers.com, and we appreciate their support. All right, so back to this. Um, what were you going to say? You were about to say about... Uh, I forgot where we were. Yeah, <laughs> um, what were you talking about? Darn, because I was... Well, we, can, we could actually play off what you were just talking about, social what's media's that? aspect yes. in uh, what's, what some people are referring to as the global revolution. Right. With How that's worked out. You know, people call it the Twitter revolution, though right. it's, it's Twitter, not, or Facebook. not entirely fair to say because the Arab Spring was a long time coming with all these countries and uh, mm -hmm. started with the immolation protest in Tunisia, spread around. And um, were it not for the technology, such as... it. You know, right now we really rely on 4G for these for the live feeds, right? Because three, you know, it's just the quality of the audio. Otherwise, you're barely seeing anything. Mm -hmm. So with with 4G phones came to, uh, you know, and then we have Twitter, Facebook. You know, there's a whole other slew of social media sites, mm -hmm. and th this, you know, near f speed of light information exchange yeah. is allowing for essentially a, world, a global revolution to occur within the same year. Yeah. Whereas if, you know, a hundred years ago, you'd hear three months from now that something happened in Egypt and you'd say, huh, yeah. how about that? Or, yeah. You know. Like, like learning, <laughs> like uh, following light from a distant star, from a different d distant yeah. galaxy. By the time you learn about it, it's already over. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Real time. It's a real time news. And also almost censorship proof. I heard a quote once about um, the internet views censorship as a flaw and routes around it, which is kind of an analogy of you know how yeah. it, it does because when you when something is censored, everybody notice you can notice. That, yep. Well, why is that censored? And they just they just bypass it. So the government can shut down the internet. <laughs> well, and, yeah, we're being threatened now with uh, right. a few of these big companies like Verizon, Google going after net neutrality, mm -hmm. and uh, now we have SOPA and Protect IP. Yeah. So people are. You, you don't want to, I mean, I, I don't know if, if what they're trying to do can be done because people have the internet ingrained in them. Yeah. I know that if my internets were taken away from me, I'd probably freak out. That's the thing, that, you know, but then again, the police state, you know, if they make a law, then mm -hmm. somebody's going to try and enforce it, and then it's going to be, oh, no, what are we going to do, start a whole new internet? Yeah. Start a whole new internet infrastructure, you know? Mesh networks so, and, yeah. you know... Go to, I, on Twitter, it's hashtag SOPA, right? Hashtag SOPA, and read up about that and mm -hmm. contact your, yep. your representative right away. Um, you know, there's these links and, well, and tell them. You know, that it's, I, I would say contact your local Occupy at yeah, this point. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're voting on that right away, too. But, yep. I mean, yeah, I mean, who knows if you're... Who knows if your call will count, but I mean, hopefully, we still hope that, you know, the people have some influence over the representatives. I mean, if there's a massive, massive outcry, we don't know, but we can only hope. I mean, half of our representatives are, well, I think totally it's, owned. yeah, they're half of our, I think, Senate, it's, they're millionaires, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, and if the big, if the big companies want it, then, you know, you're, you just don't have a say. It's dollars, not votes. Well, money is speech, yeah. you know, so how much speech do you have? Yeah. I don't have that much on me right now, but... <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, you know, that, that's why the internet is so important. The, the internet is our last bastion of free speech because you have a way to reach millions of people yes. with nothing, a shoestring, you know, and they probably don't like that. You know, you're competing with NBC, CBS, and ABC, which they own. Yeah, well, that's, that's interesting because <laughs> I met an officer who, he, uh, he knew my name. Mm. He's like, Tim Pool, And yeah. I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I keep up. And mm. I was actually told that they're watching. They watch my feed. Mm. I mean, honestly, they'd be fools not to. Yeah, you know? it's, yeah of course. <laughs> they've got a camera walking around the occupation, giving out, you know, transparency yeah. all around. Sure. But it's, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that. 
Mm -hmm. You know, if someone in the movement is doing something wrong, they get called out on it. And mm -hmm. if an officer does something wrong, they get called out on it. Right. It's, it's, it's about real justice. Yeah, real justice, real transparency, real journalism is what that is. Yeah. And it'd be nice to get some real democracy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, democracy as majority rules is scary because the 51% oppresses the 49. But that's mm -hmm. why the, the, the General Assembly's consensus model, mm -hmm. you know, it, it works yeah. to, to a degree. I mean, it's, it's better to have mm -hmm. everyone at least understand the decisions being made. Mm -hmm. From what I've witnessed there, it's, I've seen someone, you know, be unhappy with a proposal, mm -hmm. but, you know, he saw everyone essentially like the proposal and then he brought up his concern and someone addressed it and explained why they want to do what they want to do. And he, mm -hmm. he said, okay, you know, I get it. Yeah. So it's, it's really great when you see that people understand, at least understanding that for the, you know, everyone agrees to, or mm -hmm. everyone disagrees with you. Yeah. So you can gracefully say, okay. Yeah. The, you know, that idea you, you mentioned that, um, the and I've heard that before many times about the consensus model versus democracy. Fifty-one percent oppresses the forty-nine percent. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I agree with that because and here's why: because um, that assumes real simply that fifty-one percent is going to only look out for their own interest, and and they and the fifty-one percent is absolutely going to have no human decency or respect for the other forty-nine percent. <laughs> and I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I mean, there, 1% of the people <laughs> yeah. may fee, be like that, like inhuman. But I think that 51% of the people um, are decent people. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the majority of the 51% of the people are decent people who, like, <clears throat> just because there's a minority and a, a majority, like whatever, man, pick a minority, it could be any minority, right? Yeah. If just because there's a majority of people who are type X and a, and a minority of people who are type a why, I don't think, I think, I still think the majority would say, no, the majority are for fairness. Yeah. And so I don't believe that, in my opinion, I don't believe mm. that 51% will necessarily oppress the 49%. So I don't yeah. think, I mean, it's great if you can get consensus on everything, but I don't think that it, you have to have consensus on everything. In fact, like that's often a problem of getting things done. I because agree. if you have to have consensus on everything we can't even have a consensus where to go to have lunch yeah there, there needs to be respect for true authority mm -hmm. such as you know this illegitimate authority why does this officer tell me i can't stand on the sidewalk because yeah. someone told him he could right. because he has he has you know force behind him that's that's not real authority right but when a doctor says you know put pressure on the wound that's that's authority he's, right you know he's telling you to do it and he knows why you have to do it mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that's kind of yeah. So do you wanna, let's talk about the drones. Do you want to yeah, yeah, about this? Because you, you don't know much about he, it. He hinted about the drones earlier, and uh, I was like, no, no, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, because I want to hear it fresh. So I don't, what's this about drones? I mean, I don't know if drone is the appropriate word, but it's whatever. Are you talking about military drones that we're using to assassinate people? No. No. Okay, I'm let's talking get back about, clear. Okay. <laughs> about two-pound pieces of styrofoam. They're quadricopters. Yes, we had one in here. Oh, you do? Well, we don't now, but we did before. Oh, okay. But, we're going yeah. to use those, and they have two cameras mounted on them. One those points cool. down, one points forward. Yes. And I'm going to be running a Linux developer tool so I can control it via joystick. You're and an then, IT geek, right? You're a computer geek. Uh, I'm jack of all trades, so okay. I can understand a lot of, you know, I'm not going to program anything, and I, okay. I understand enough to communicate, but okay. I'm no expert. But I'm going to do a, a screen capture for the, for the live broadcast, mm -hmm. and we're essentially going to have the OccuCopter, <laughs> and it's, it's essentially a toy. They sell them yeah. at Toys R Us yeah. and Walmart. So, Somebody the, donated these? Or? Yes, someone, someone uh, bought us a couple, and oh my another gosh. person donated so we could buy more. So, come Monday, should it arrive early enough, we're going to start doing the trial runs, and mm -hmm. I'm going to have that on uh, uh, TimCast.tv, hopefully it'll be up by then. And mm -hmm. after that, we actually have the, these, a few of my friends from the, from the innovation community mm -hmm. are working on building one from scratch. That's, you know, oh. the original plan was to use GPS and set waypoints so it could travel around, but wow. apparently that, that creates military regulation. So, whoa! No GPSs. Just keep the keep. If we're going to keep it as a toy, mm -hmm. essentially a remote control helicopter. Wow! But we'll be able to get aerial shots, um, as long as it doesn't go over four hundred feet. There's no there's no restrictions. 
Wow. This remote control helicopter you control through iPhone for That's the most amazing. part. That's amazing. But if you have a, if you use a GPS on it, then it requires registration with the military. Yeah, well, then it creates, a, it, it turns into a military. Vehicle. It's a weapon. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what I'm hearing. It's I mean, a surveillance, I guess it could be. Yeah, yeah, but they don't I want figured, just everybody doing that. <laughs> well, it's a toy. They sell them. I mean, yeah. you can do it. You yeah. know, it's you go to Toys R Us, pick one up. It seems get odd. one for the family. Hmm. Amazing, amazing. So now you know these Google cars that go by taking pictures of your house. Now you're gonna have like drones taking pictures of you everywhere, and well, who knows who owns here, them. Well, here's here's how I put it. It's that everyone's worried about Big Brother watching. Well, the truth is, little there's 150 million little yeah. brothers with cameras too yeah. watching Big Brother. We are the 99 percent. We outnumber them. We have more cameras too. Exactly. We so need to keep an eye on them. We need personal privacy yeah. and public transparency. Yeah. And right now we have the opposite of that. Right. We have government acting in secret, and we have intrusive cameras in our lives. So, what do you think about, about people stalking the, the, the people in power with cameras and, and really keeping an eye on them and who they're meeting with and what they're doing and exposing that? I mean, it's like I said, personal privacy, public transparency. If mm-hmm. what they're, what they're, their meetings, if they're illegal meetings, like we, you know, we've heard a lot of talk about from people about Bilderberg, which right. I'm not going to get into the, cons- you know, I don't want to say conspiracy, but I guess I have to, mm. you know, for whatever those meetings are about, if they're yeah, making... They're about, I mean, if, if people meeting is a meeting, so you can call it a conspiracy or whatever you want. But well, yeah, that word like is definition. so misused. Exactly. Yeah, the true word. It's like uh, it's like nine eleven was was uh, you know the World Trade Center was that a conspiracy? Duh, of course it was. Two people deciding to do something is a conspiracy. So it didn't happen accidentally. Yeah, <laughs> it was a murder. The quest, only question is who done it, right? So that word is so misused. But, yeah, but yeah, but I know what you're saying. So. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's if they're meeting to make public decisions, mm-hmm. then they should be public. If, and if, wonder what else they're meeting about. I mean, what else would they be meeting about? Bingo? Who knows? Hey, you, you, I mean, that's, that's the thing. You have to be pragmatic. And it's I not a question about are they meeting because there's they, video exactly. of them going yes. in, right? There's, so there's a lot of there's videos of these world leaders. They meet together. And, yeah, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of people say, oh, they're, they're doing something nefarious. And it's kind of, you really, you can't say that. I mean, you can think that if you want, but for all you know, they birds of a feather flock together and they want to talk about uh, the new Katy Perry video that came out. I mean, could be more likely they're going to talk golf and you know other, you know, could be that. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> could be. Anything. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm exaggerating here, but, the, but actually, there are laws against uh, uh, yeah, public yeah, elected exactly. officials having yep. secret meetings of state. But you know, yeah. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks to the cameras, they're public. So yeah. But yeah, the point is, if if they are. You know, that's the, that's the problem. Are they meeting to talk about policy? Mm-hmm. Or are they meeting to talk about how they like playing golf together and discuss who's the best in tennis right now? Right. You know, I mean... We, and what we, can you do about it? You know, when the, when the lawmakers and the, the politicians and the police themselves are breaking the laws, the bankers, the Wall Street, when they're breaking the laws, the people who have the power are breaking the laws, what are you going to do? You know, you're gonna, how are you going to prosecute the police officer? How are you going to prosecute the... Politician in Washington. Well, you know. I, have, I have a personal demand. What's that? That if you want to be a congressman, a senator, the president, that you should get paid the, a similar rate to what armed service personnel get. That if you're married, you get BAH, and you'll get housing, mm-hmm. and you're a public servant, mm-hmm. and there should, the reward should be the fact that you have sacrificed so much to defend democracy and the mm-hmm. will of the people. You shouldn't be getting, you know, these life pensions, yeah. millions of dollars. But if you're the 12th richest American, like Bloomberg, yeah. <laughs> I heard, <laughs> you know, what does he care? He doesn't need, a, he need, he doesn't need any income anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They come in with so much money to begin with. It's, it, it makes me wonder about, I mean, if I had that much money, I'd probably just, man, I mm-hmm. would probably give most of it away. Mm. Like, here, here's five grand I just handed somebody. Would you feel guilty if you kept it? If I kept the money? If you had that much money and you didn't give it away, would you feel guilty? Yes. You would? Yeah. You'd feel guilty having more than the average person? I wouldn't say guilty. I would, I would feel, I'd feel bad. I, I, mm-hmm. I mean, actually, I just I don't understand. There's no way I could keep that much money. Oh, here's a good question. This is leading to another thought. Somebody tweeted to me. Actually, I had this thought. <laughs> In the shower, I have these thoughts in the shower. But anyway, I had this, I do my best thinking in the morning, like, but you know, I raise our coffee. And all of a sudden it hit me, this 90, it was like the early days, very, very early days of Occupy Wall Street, right? And I, the 99% was in my head, you know, 99%, 1%. And, it, and the statistic hit me, I was like, wait a minute. I remember this statistic I heard like two, three years before, that every American, the poorest Americans, everybody in the United States, 
even the, the illegal aliens, whatever, the poorest people, are, res, residents, we'll say, in the United States are in the 1% wealthiest human beings on the planet. Yeah. And all of a sudden it hit me like, wait a minute, we are the one. The poorest Americans are the 1%. Mm -hmm. And so in the global perspective, the United States is the, the 1%, the whole entire thing. I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? And then later, I was having breakfast, and somebody tweeted a picture to me, and it was a photo. You might have seen it going around. But it had... Uh, it said 99%, uh, and then it had these starving kids in Cambodia or somewhere yep. in Africa. And then it had 1%, and there was an occupier saying 99%, but it's really mm -hmm. the 1%. And there is that, too. So what do you have to say about that? There are a lot of people who subscribe to Occupy who are fighting for global justice. You know, people who, are, uh, who oppose sweatshop labor mm -hmm. and the exploitation of third world countries. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's a big issue. How would so, they feel about being... Uh, reminded that they are in the 1% when you talk about global terms. I can't speak for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if everyone has this... Uh, you can't? <laughs> oh, no, no, I know, I, I know, I'm just teasing. I don't know if people have the perspicacity. <laughs> of course not. But what I would say is, you're absolutely right. America is a very wealthy nation. We have a lot of privileges here, especially considering the fact we can protest without getting killed by snipers, like in the Arab Spring where 32 people just died. Right. However, there are problems that need to be addressed. And when we have this huge disparity gap of the top 1% getting between 350 and 450 times what the workers make, mm -hmm. that needs to be corrected. Even the most conservative conservatives agree with that, I think. I, that's the thing. There's so many issues that the conservatives agree with that, that mm -hmm. you know, people are trying to politicize and say, oh, it's, the, it's the far right, it's these wacky people. But it's actually like almost 99% of Americans probably would agree with that. I, I think the root of the issue is corruption. Yeah. That it's not... You know, I see a lot of political cartoons come out Corruption. that show the Tea Party fighting against big government and Occupy fighting against big corporations. It's almost the but, same. Well, they're the same thing. Well, the, the well, same people own the corporations and the government. It's true. <laughs> and, well, the thing I want to correct, though, is that you see people down at Occupy protesting government. Mm -hmm. You know, it's and that's yeah. what they're trying to do. They're trying yeah. to make Occupy look like it's left or right wing when it's really not. Exactly. When you've got their Tea Partiers down there, yeah. and people refuse. Like a, a lot of people refuse to believe that people who used to subscribe to the Tea Party would actually join Occupy, yeah. and it's, you have to think about what Occupy, you have, you have to go down and see for yourself. That's right, and also, to, and, and also you really t talk to people in the working groups, and, yeah. like the, the real movement itself. The other thing is, uh, that I always remind people is that it's about that divide and conquer idea, yep. that if I can keep you fighting with amongst yourselves, then I can keep you in the dark about the real enemy. Like if the blue team is fighting with the red team and the red team is fighting with the blue team, the, the left is fighting with the right, back and forth, back and forth, you know, the, 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 le the right blames the left and the left blames the right and you just keep fighting with yourselves, you won't look at who's really exactly. pulling the strings. It's kind, of, it's kind of like this. Hey, check that out. And when you look, they reach for you. Yeah, you exactly. Your pocket. Like the magician. Like, don't, yep. you know, don't look over here. Yeah. Here's a football. Yeah. No offense to those who like football, but yeah. I mean... Exactly. It's like the Coliseum of Rome. Dancing with the Stars, American Idol, football, yep. whatever, whatever, two and a half men. Charlie Sheen, look over here. Yeah, yeah don't pay yeah. any attention to what we're doing over here let's as we're give, passing uh, these bills. Let's give our baseball players a million dollar a year salary plus. Yeah. Let's give actors, you know, fifty million dollars to do a movie or whatever. And, and lay off school teachers a, and get more administrators instead. And then, <laughs> you know, and then pay forty thousand dollars a year to firefighters. Let's have record profits for mm. Um, mm. for you know the healthcare industry and then give big bailouts to, to banks, yeah. which then give themselves huge executive bonuses. And then ask the teacher to take a hit. Take one for the team. Was it the bailout of the, the of Chrysler? Was that the first big bailout? I, uh, I, I don't remember. know. I mean, maybe you're too young to remember. Yeah, because I'm sure there's been bailouts before that. I should be. You should be asking me because I'm older. But I, if, the first one that I remember was Chrysler. Was the big auto company bailout that? Oh, it's too big to fail. Is this is the big three, and if we lose one of the auto companies, what's yeah. going to happen? And I think that that was the spark of an idea. Like, whoa, too big to fail. That's a great idea. Let's plan this. Yeah, let's let's use that. Have let's, you seen Inside a uh, no, inside, inside, inside job. job? Yeah, Inside Job. I have not, but I kind of have to see it now. You have to because I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to. I'll give I'll give you a copy. I'll send you a, a, yeah. a DVD. Yeah, everybody has to watch Inside Job. In fact, I think I saw it on Vimeo. If you go to Vimeo and do a search, I'm pretty sure I saw it there. I, I've seen Wall Street with Shia LaBeouf. Is that similar? I don't know. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's okay. No, no, no. That's yeah, the no, it's yeah. a movie. Fiction, right, right, right. Well, this is a movie, but it's a documentary. This is like Yeah, true. yeah, no, yeah. I know. It's amazing. It's really, really good. You have to watch it actually over and over and over because it's so much information and so factual and it's Well, there was, a, there was a guy who donated gloves to me 
on the 17th. Oh, I brought you gloves. That was in my care package too. Oh, yeah, fingerless he me, gloves. Yeah. He brought me fingerless gloves. <laughs> he was actually interviewed for Inside Job. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, he was in it then? Well, I don't know if he was in it. Oh, but he was interviewed for it. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That's an amazing movie. You've got to watch it. Oh, my God. Remind me. Give him a disc. I will yeah. watch it tonight. Yeah, or just go to Vimeo and do a search for Inside Job. You'll see it. But it's, like, <laughs> it's an hour. Netflix? And it's, no, I tried. It's not on Netflix. Oh, really? I don't know why. Vimeo, <laughs> whatever. But uh, anyhow, um, it's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really. I mean, everybody should see that. And, yeah. and they'll all be down in the Occupy movement as soon as they watch that thing and go, oh my gosh, Iceland, oh my gosh. I, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised people aren't talking about Iceland. Oh, I know, I know, more and more. Well, I think they need to see this inside job. You let's really get, need let's to get rid it. of the banks and just have our own revolution. Oh, <laughs> and man. they did it. Yeah, they did it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I know, totally. We want to have, have a Bitcoin conference in Iceland. We're talking about that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, we have to do this again. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah. And you're going to do a tour, right? You're going to do a tour of Occupy's? Is that, is that, are, you, are you still that's, doing that? For that's the, documentary. For the documentary. Yeah, so we're going to do, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, with Jesse LaGreca, mm-hmm. myself, and yeah. a few others. We will travel around. Jesse, by the way, Je- for those of you who don't know, Jesse LaGreca is the guy that just pwned Fox News. He's got and the union hat. Yeah, and Fox News never aired the video between Charlie nope. Lodge, but it's uh, all over YouTube. Yeah, so just yeah. Put in Jesse Occupy on YouTube, and you'll you know you've probably already seen it. So but anyway, go ahead. So he's gonna go with you. Yes, okay. that's that's the plan. Mm-hmm. But things are starting getting starting to get crazy. We can't control what's happening. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna mm-hmm. try and get on this as soon as possible. Okay. Due to the massive evictions we're seeing around the country, we might have to fly mm-hmm. instead of drive. But yeah. it's it's stuff I'm working out and. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you can fly. Yeah. More efficient. Maybe we'll get some uh, miles, frequent flyer miles donated or and something. Virgin, Virgin Atlantic, and you can plug in your, ba- charge your batteries on the way. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I just flew from California, and he, and he was able to USB have electricity and, and Wi-Fi free. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's the future. Yeah. All right. Well, let's do it again. Thanks so much, Tim. Yeah, no problem. So, appreciate it. What sure. you're doing, everything you're doing. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And we will see you next time on the Occupy Wall Street Show. We-